What is non-outrage comedy? Clobbering time. The only one of these guys that I can actually stand. It usually ends one way, right? You think they were just eating them or something? All right, let's do this. We're back with another non-outrage comics. My name is John, better known as JG, and today I want to get into this comic that I found that's called Clobberin' Time. Clobberin' Time, for those of you who don't know, is the famous catchphrase of The Thing from Marvel Comics Fantastic Four. And what I want to say is before we get started, I try to, I don't want to be negative here. I, I don't want to be negative, but anyone who knows me, knows I have a problem with the Fantastic Four. I just don't like them. I don't like them. Despite all the Fantastic Four comics I actually have. So it's kind of weird, but but uh, there's a reason for it. But I don't want to get into too much of it because it, it gets very negative and I'm really down on these guys. So that's why in this comic, I just want to talk about what's going on without getting into the whole thing with the Fantastic Four because the thing is the only one of these guys that I can actually stand. <laughs> at least halfway. So if I start to go negative, I'll try to catch myself. I'm just giving you a fair warning firsthand. Anyway, this comic, Clobberin' Time, I saw the I saw the cover and I said, okay, what's what's going on with this? It's Hulk and Thing on the cover. And again, if if you didn't know, the Hulk and Thing, of course, have a, a famous rivalry for the past 50 years, 60 years of you know, them fighting, they're both these huge monsters. However, it usually ends one way, right? With with the thing getting his butt kicked because he sucks compared to the Hulk. It's always interesting to see these two clash again and again. And I must admit, I like seeing the thing get his butt kicked. But anyway, that doesn't actually happen here. What really happens is they're teaming up here. They're teaming up. So it looks to me like... This clobberin' time is a, a reimagining or a rebooting of a, a classic comic from back in the 70s and 80s where The Thing did have his own comic and it was called Marvel 2-in-1. And that was a comic where every issue, every month, The Thing would team up with a different Marvel superhero. So it was a way for them to kind of showcase what was going on around the Marvel Universe. Like at the end, of, if, it was, if it was The Thing and Spider-Woman... Then at the end, they'd be like, hey, make sure you check out Spider-Woman. Or, uh, you know, if it was the thing in Alpha Flight, they'd be like, hey, make sure to check out what's going on with Alpha Flight in, in their own comic. So it was, it was promotional, but the issues were usually pretty darn entertaining. Uh, it was nice to get the thing away from the rest of the Fantastic Four because, again, they suck. And he's the only one. He only 50% sucks compared to them. So I was pretty excited about this. And I'm going to share some news I found at the end about this series. But anyway, so I, I got it. I wanted a fun issue. And let's get into what happens in this issue. So I start reading this thing. The, the very first thing I see when I when I start up the... Uh, I buy from Comixology. I start this thing up and, and uh, open it up. And there's a watcher on the first page. Like, come on. When, when, there, when there's a watcher, you might think that, okay, is this going to be a what if comic? I'm not really on board with that a lot of times because the what ifs, like, well, they didn't really happen. I'm trying to read something that actually happened within the continuity. So what I'm seeing here is this is a watcher, not our regular watcher, not, not uh, Uata, the watcher, who's, who's the regular Marvel Universe watcher that you probably saw in the What If series, uh, cartoon series that came out a couple years back. But, or was it even last year? This is a different watcher, and apparently his name is Tuva2, and uh, T-U-V-A-H-T-U, Tuva2, who I didn't really know about. And then I decided to look up who Tuva2 is, and apparently he's been banished from the watcher community. And in, in the picture, he's holding a freaking gun and he's got a sword or something on his back so that doesn't look good i don't know where he came from but, but clearly he's not like the other watchers so uh he's saying that okay this is a story this this happened and i'm going to tell you about it okay that's fine so we get into this story and it looks like we're starting with the fantastic four for for whatever reason 
Bruce Banner, who's not the Hulk now, he's just Bruce Banner, he's decided to come by and kick it with Reed Richards. And they must be looking at his gamma levels or something to that effect. And it's always difficult to know which, which Hulk you're dealing with at the time. So I'm trying to fit this into the current stories. This doesn't quite fit with the current, what's going on in Hulk right now. But whatever, you know, maybe it happened, you know, a few years back or something. So Banner has come to hang out with Reed. And Reed, of course, is pretty much the smartest guy in the Marvel Universe. And to me, it's always seemed that Banner, he's right up there with Reed Richards. Easily just as intelligent. However, where Reed has the time and luxury to just sit back and focus on his experiments and and learn and, and you know... Uh, kind of for uh, increase his his knowledge and ability banner doesn't get that because he keeps turning into this monster he's roaming the countryside he's hunted down he doesn't have time to just focus on his scientific craft so he's hanging out with reed and then the thing comes in with the lunch order hey it's time for lunch okay sounds good but then some dude shows up, and by some dude, he's he's really some kind of a, a scavenger or something, and he's he looks like he's a cross between Iron Man and Doctor Doom, and maybe even it it reminded me of the old uh, there's a character called Danger from the X Men, and long story short, they realized th- their uh, their training room, their Danger room, was alive. And then it came to life and turned into this robot and and attacked them. And it kind of reminded me of that. I don't know if it has anything to do with that. But anyway, so the dude comes in and apparently he's scavenging things throughout time. And he's been busted now. And so he's he's attacked by the thing. And in response, he opens up some kind of a portal and throws Banner and the thing through this portal. And then kind of rips him as he does so, kind of tells him, hey, you guys, you heroes, you really cause a lot of trouble for the people in my time, and for whatever reason, they think you're great, but I don't. I don't like you dudes, and here, go somewhere else, and he he just throws them into another, I don't know if it's another dimension, completely different world. Either way, they're just long gone, and the portal closes. Now, they are stuck in some kind of fantasy world with these kind of fantasy creatures who, who Ben Grimm, who, who the thing, he calls them the Nub Nubs, but... You know, they kind of look like little mushroom people or something. And they're telling the thing in the Hulk, hey, sorry you guys showed up here because we're all about to die. This is it. This this Titan creature is coming and it's going to gonna kill us. And, you know, Ben Grimm's like, yeah, I, I don't think so. So this creature shows up. Banner turns into the Hulk. That's why you can never quite kind of know what Hulk this is. He seems to really easily turn into the Hulk. The Green Hulk. And so, yeah, he, he Hulk punches out this creature. The thing, you know, kind of wails on him, too. And the Hulk seems fairly intelligent here. So that's the kind of Hulk we're dealing with. He's, he's not impaired Hulk smash Hulk, who's kind of like childlike Hulk. He's, he's angry, but not dumb. So then we come to find out that these people, the Nub Nubs, they've been under attack from these demons and they've tried to get to this refuge and their whole society's collapsed. There's not much they can do because their their one hope is their sorcerer supreme, their Doctor Strange essentially has been captured by these demons and they need them back so they can hide from these people. So then, you know, it's kind of a MacGuffin or, or kind of a, not a MacGuffin, but a, but a, uh, Ben just seems to have these portable, what does he call them? his uh, micro drones in his in his belt that I'm sure redesigned. But anyway, he sends over these micro drones to spy on these demons. They're watching it. And so they can see there's a bazillion of these demons. And the thing is saying, hey, Hulk, we got to plan this out. This is too many guys, even for us. So what we're going to do is we're going to sneak in. Hulk says, no way. I'm sorry. So he just jumps off goes and wails on these dudes. You can see it on the TV, on the screen. Hulk's wailing on these dudes. The thing is just standing there looking like a moron. But um, Hulk takes care of it, brings the Sorcerer Supreme back. And and what's funny is there's a point where the the Nub Nub creatures, are, they're saying, wow, Hulk really is the strongest there is. And then the thing says, hey, smell isn't everything, pal. And the first time I read it, 
I didn't get it. I was like, what? And then I read it again. I was like, oh, oh okay, yeah. Good, good one. Good one thing. Anyway, so <laughs> so then it looks like this is going to be over. So the their Sorcerer Supreme, he's like, I'm going to send you guys back. Thanks for helping us. But then at the last second, here come all these demons. They found them. And the funny thing is they show this demon who he's been wailed on by the Hulk and he's he's got bandages on. He's got got a crutch. And I just started laughing because it's just it was the most ridiculous thing that uh, these awful demons like some somebody went to help this guy and get get him a crutch after he got beat down. But whatever, you think they would have just eaten him or something. So then what happens is they could just jump through the portal and take off. But of course, they're not going to do that. So they turn around, they go back and they wail on these on these uh, demons, which, you know, is why this is called it's clobbering time. So they just beat up about a million demons and they're just torn to shreds. That's one thing, (laughs) the art in this one, the artist, Steve Scross, they actually, he was the writer as well. Steve Scross decided to draw the thing's injuries pretty much as gross as possible. I'm like, man, this is, you didn't have to go this far, but wow. I mean, when the thing is messed up here, he's really messed up. But anyway, they survived. And so strangely, some kind of a message comes through the thing's phone from the human torch. And he's, you know, the human torch is, he's the second worst. You'd think he would be the worst, but he's not, he's not really the worst. He's the second worst of the Fantastic Four. And I don't want to get into it, but he's the second worst. But anyway, so a message from him comes in and he tells the thing that, hey, you know, your other catchphrase is, you're the idol of millions, but I have a million followers, and you don't have a million followers. And I'm like, oh, God, Human Torch. Ugh. But anyway, back to the predicament. We see Hulk and Thing. They're, now they're like, okay, we're trapped here, we're trapped here. But it turns out that this whole thing, these weren't really demi- demons, they were deviants. If you ever saw the Marvel movie, The Eternals, terrible movie, by the just awful movie, but the Eternals enemies are the deviants. And really they were supposed to be an offshoot of humanity that these celestial creatures made. If you remember Guardians of the Galaxy, the uh, the headquarters they have, nowhere, nowhere was uh, the head of a floating celestial. And celestials are like space gods. They concern themselves with, with um, species development, essentially. They come and they make changes to the species. And on Earth, they took the baseline human and they diverged them two ways. They made deviants and they made eternals. The eternals were like gods. The deviants are like demons. So that's what's happening here on this world. They see this celestial. And I'm not sure which celestial this is. But whoever he is, I don't think it's Erisham or maybe it is. Erisham the Judge. But this Celestial decides that their experiment, their their deviant experiment, has been contaminated by the Hulk and the Thing. And it also says temporal temporal anomalies detected. So they have been moved in time and not just space. So I'm not sure where where and when this happened. But anyway, it gets rid of them. It's like, okay, we're done here. So I think we can we can see that the the nub nub people were fine were fine, and the watcher even says, "Hey, they went on to uh, a gilded age undreamed of." Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. And these guys get back. They get back to the Fantastic Four's headquarters where they they need to have lunch. Reed, I'm pretty sure Reed saw this, but he acts like he didn't see anything. And then he's like, hey, guys, it's time for lunch. Aren't you going to have some lunch? And here's here's Hulk and Thing just beaten to a pulp. And he's like, oh, you guys aren't having any of this food? It's great or whatever. And I know it's supposed to be funny, but it just kind of showcases what a pompous stooge Reed is. And okay, yeah, I don't, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. But, but anyway, here, here's the deal with this comic. Very, very entertaining. It's definitely the kind of thing I'm looking for. It, it did really remind me of those great Marvel two and ones from back in the day. And I was hoping for more of this, but actually, 
I decided to look this up and see how many issues. I wanted to know, was it going to be six issues or 12 issues? I'm sure it's not going to be continuing, not going to be ongoing. And so the the writer, Steve Scrooge, who's also the artist in this one, and Steve Scrooge, a, a fun fact for him is that he was the storyboard artist on the original, the very first Matrix film. And I thought I always thought that was interesting that he he was the first one to draw Neo and Trinity and, and you know, uh, Morpheus and such and, and really go through the whole movie. I don't know if he did the, the sequels or not. But anyway, Steve Scrooge, I saw an article where they were saying Marvel has actually canceled all the orders for this this comic there's not going to be any more for the foreseeable future so that kind of sucks maybe maybe the uh the sales didn't go as well as they thought and you know they're not even giving it a chance i don't know if there's some other reason i'm not being privy to to their business decisions but for whatever reason they put this out and then they they kind of pulled the rug out from under it and they were like you know what no we're done that's it well that's too bad because the next issue said it was going to be the thing going to Krakoa, which of course Krakoa being the new home of the X-Men, Krakoa is the island that they live on now. And it's a nation. The mutants have a nation. And there was a whole thing of, of Fantastic Four versus the X-Men just a few years ago. I talked about on another uh, site. And boy, Fantastic Four just do not come off good. And I was hoping to see more of that. I wanted to see the thing turn up on this island. And he was going to be teaming up with Wolverine. And we were going to find out more about the mysterious guy who, who sent them through this portal. And so now I guess we're not going to know what the deal was on that. That's too bad. So I don't know if there's just... Is there is there no room for these kind of one-off type stories anymore? It, it seems like... Uh, I, I've mentioned before how some of these stories, they, they want a six-issue arc. They want to be able to sell it twice. They have to be able to sell the original issues and then bundle it and turn it into a graphic novel or, or something like that that they can then sell again. And maybe they just thought a story like this they couldn't do that with. Although it does look like it looks like it has a continuing overarching story, which sometimes was the case in Marvel two and one back in the days, it would it might go on for six seven issues, and he would just team up with you know Wonder Man, Iron Man, or or uh, you know Miss Marvel or somebody, and they would each have their little part in the story, and then the thing would wrap it up, which was similar to uh, Mar Marvel two and one was actually. Um, kind of a, a riff on Spider-Man's Marvel team-up, which went for even longer, which was like Spider-Man kind of begging for help every month from other heroes, and he might have a, a overarching story that would last, you know, eight or nine issues, and these different heroes would have a spot in it. So I was looking forward to more of that kind of action, and unfortunately, I, I almost wish I wouldn't have looked it up now because, you know, I, I could have looked forward to it. Now, I can't. That's too bad, Marvel. So, yeah, good news, bad news. A great, great comic, great comic, but uh, there's not going to be no more curses. So, <laughs> I think with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. This has been uh, Non Outrage Comics. My name is John Garrett. If you guys like this, please uh, like and share, subscribe. I really appreciate it. I'm going to see you guys next time.